Hi, my name is Dr. Tyler Town. I'm the Undergraduate Studies Coordinator and a Professor of Psychology here at FSU Panama City. I also serve on the Committee for the Undergraduate Research Symposium. What I wanted to do today was to talk to you a little bit about how to go about formatting your presentation for the Undergraduate Research Symposium. I've supplied a PowerPoint template that you can use as a starting point for designing the presentation that you want to give. Please be aware that these are only recommendations. The actual format of your presentation is going to vary based on the area of your study, the format or type of project that you are presenting, and your personal preferences as you work through uh, formulating your presentation. What I hope to provide today is simply an outline or a launching point for you to uh, have a skeleton for to, be, to begin to think about how you want to format your presentation. So let's get started. On the very first page, you're going to want to include your project title, your institutional affiliation, such as FSU, Gulf Coast State College, or per perhaps your local high school. You'll, you may also want to include the area that your research project is from. So that would be something like psychology, engineering, natural sciences, geology, etc. On the first page, you're going to have your introduction. This is going to introduce your research question if it's a research project. It's going to generally introduce the research issue. It would also include your hypothesis if you have one or if it's relevant to your area and any relevant background information from that area. So if you have a literature review or there's other types of information that need to be included for your listener to fully understand the scope of your project, that's going to go into your introduction. I want you to keep in mind that your presentation is a story. You want to set up your story with the relevant characters and build the world that you'll be filling in throughout your presentation. I like to think of effective presentations occurring in three broad phases. I want you to tell me what you're about to tell me. I want you to tell me, and then I want you to tell me what you told me. So you're going to introduce the issues, give the relevant background information, and then you're going to launch into your methods results section where you'll begin to flesh out your project and talk about specifically what you did to answer your research question. When you get to your conclusions and discussion section, that's when you'll wrap everything up together and bring all of your storylines uh, to hopefully a satisfying conclusion. A couple of warnings about your introduction section. You wanna make sure that you're comprehensively introducing your issue but you don't want to get in the quote weeds about um, your particular area. Keep in mind that this undergraduate research symposium is a multidisciplinary event. What that means is that not everybody viewing your presentation is going to be an expert in your area. So you need to make sure that you're defining jargon terms, that you're bringing um, technical issues down to a level where a lay person should be able to understand them. You also don't want your introduction to be too verbose. There's a difference between a presentation and a pamphlet. You don't want to be handing out pamphlets to your viewers. You want to include pictures or other types of visual aids where appropriate, but you don't want your presentation to be a wall of text that your viewer is reading rather than paying attention to what you're actually saying. When you get to your method section, that's when you're going to talk about your research design if you have one. You might have a diagram or other type of figure uh, if that is appropriate. You'll talk about their participants, who participated in your study. Um, you may, if you're in another area, talk about particular apparatus, computers or machines or other types of um, equipment that you used for your study. A procedure for answering your research question or addressing your hypothesis or any other relevant information for the methodology. If this was a creative art project, you might talk about the materials or media that you used or your process in creating the artwork um, rather than technical issues about the types of participants that uh, you included. Again, 
highly encourage you to use visual aids, diagrams, or other types of figures that can guide people through your methodology. Then you get into your results. Your results should include only the outcomes of whatever you presented in your methodologies. For some of you, if it's a research proposal, you may not even have results, in which case you could disregard this slide. For those of you who have completed or preliminary um, data, you'll present it here in a way, again, that's clear, concise, and accessible to a wide range of viewers, especially those that are not, um, not experts in your particular area. So please keep that in mind as you're um, formulating your results. Your results should not include further discussion. In other words, you just want to present the raw data here in a way that illustrates what you found from your method section. The place where you go to present your thoughts on the outcome of the results is your discussion section. So your discussion section should include not only your interpretation of your results, but also information about some potential weaknesses or shortcomings of your methodologies or your study, what you think went right or maybe went wrong with your study, and some future directions for where this line of research is going either from yourself or by yourself or by um, other researchers in the field. This is your place to talk about your thoughts on the project. You're also tying up all of those loose ends that you started in your introduction. So you should have a conclusion or an allusion to your research question in your results, or excuse me, in your discussion and conclusion section. It's a very important section. Again, containing relevant discussion, weaknesses and strengths, future directions for this line. Finally, you'll have a thank you slide where you'll say thank you not only to your audience, but also to anybody who helped mentor or guide you along the way. This lets you know that you're done with your presentation and that you're ready to open it up for questions. Finally, I always like to include a work cited or a references slide at the end so that you can appropriately give credit to those individuals in your introduction or in other parts of your presentation that you used ideas from. Um, this is to avoid plagiarism, obviously, um, but it's also a nice addition to give your viewers um, or your readers, if the slides are posted, um, a place to go if they want more information about that particular topic. Okay, that's the basics. If you have any questions about um, using this PowerPoint template, formulating an effective slideshow, or even things like recording your own videos, please feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Dr. Tyler Town. You can reach me at ttown at fsu.edu. That's t-t-o-w-n-e at fsu.edu, and I'd be happy to help anyone who needs it. Thank you so much for your time, and good luck forming your presentation.